So I realised what I forgot to do when I was Professor doing my various bits of uh, how to get your rocket into orbit. Um, namely, I forgot how to demonstrate how to actually make a rocket. Right, we're going to need... Uh, well, a rocket needs basically three components. We need somewhere for the pilot to be. A cockpit or capsule. We ideally need a kind of engine to make the rocket go up. And ideally, even more usefully than the engine, almost, some kind of fuel to make the rocket go. You can see this is a thoroughly sensible design. And if I've got my maths right, yes, it should work perfectly. However, as you can see, this rocket is a little bit pants. It's lacking in many things, mostly style and grace. So let's try and make a slightly better rocket. I'm going to leave a capsule, um, because the game has a certain degree of aerodynamics in it. Uh, ideally we want the uh, front of the rocket to be pointy and the back of the rocket to be engine -y. Doing it the other way around could be bad. So out of pure interest, let's do it the other way around. Okay, so what I've got here is the cockpit. Going out to bolt on the top bottom of it is the one of these. I have a few mod parts as you can see, but I tend not to use them too much. It takes all the fun out of it. And a bolt on that, a parachute. The idea that we'll bring our couple back to the planet. And on the top bottom of it, I'm going to add Summon one of these. A decoupler. Now, the decoupler is a particularly useful piece of kit that makes whatever it's attached to jettison in the direction it's pointing in. So, what this means, the arrow is pointing down, so this bit here will jettison and be the bit we continue to fly. And whatever happens to be on the top bottom of it will be the bit that falls off. Ideally. As ever. So, now we want a kind of fuel tank on top. This is important as a tank that contains the fuel. And the fuel makes the rocket go. And then we need to work out where we're going to bolt the engines. And what we're going to do to attach the engines is structural. We have more decouplers. And what these ones do, these ones are actually mounted on the side of the ship. As you can see, this is important. Because this is going to let me bolt on the side of the ship some fuel tanks. Like so. And I'm going to add a fuel duct. And what that does is going to take the fuel from that tank through there, along with the arrows, into this fuel tank. And we're going to bolt onto that, furthermore, engines. Giant badass engines. And on top of those, because I'm feeling particularly helpful, we're going to add game. We're going to add some pointy bits, so it's slightly more aerodynamic. On top of that, we're going to add one of these. A stabilizing system. What that'll do is it'll hopefully give our rocket slightly more well stable. Then I'm going to take this entire section off because I've realized I've forgotten something. Namely, I'm going to add some RCS fuel. On the slight hope I will remember how to use a RCS. Yeah. RCS being on little thrustery things that help you move for entire the time for puffs of gas. So I'm going to add four of those. Done. So as we can see here, we now have a very, very safe rocket. Oh, I need to add a point of it on the top as well, I did. Uh, no, I've lost pointy bits. Pointy bits are around here somewhere. There we go. Aerodynamics. It's a good place to look for pointy bits. Okay. The problem is, now we need some way of getting this monstrosity off of the ground. I'm slightly worried those engines are going to fall off, which is a known problem. So I'm going to attach these. 
most useful thing in the entire Kerbal Space Program library. The strut. First one succeed, add more struts. If that didn't work, you obviously don't add enough struts. Okay, so under this, we're going to need to add some more decouples, which are in one of these sections that I will remember at some point. Structural. And voila, we now have those set up. And now we're adding these aerodynamically, community aerodynamically shaped bits. And these community aerodynamically shaped bits. Those. Let's not add those yet. Let's add some more fuel tanks. The important thing to remember is that each bit of mass and weight you add to your ship is going to need a lot more engine to help it take off. So the solution being, add more engine. The problem is there's too many different kinds of engine. Uh, the ones I've attached up here, the nuclear rockets, are very powerful out of the atmosphere and kind of suck in the atmosphere. These are normal liquid engines. No, no, they're the slightly worse normal engines. These are the normal engines. And they're reasonably powerful, but do prefer being in space. However, they get, hopefully we're going to be using these at about... 15-20 kilometers up, so it shouldn't be too bad. And struts. Struts are vitally important to keep things together. All you need is struts. Uh, under that, we're going to add another decoupler. Clunk. We're going to add some of these. Which I don't really need to add, but they look nice. Again, because the game works in there, uh, has a vague idea of aerodynamics, you, what you really want is pointy bits. Now I'm going to move everything up a bit more. Ah, oh, they're fairly close together. That shouldn't be too bad. But these particular engines... No, that, that doesn't make any sense, game. These particular engines have a known problem in that they do tend to... Uh, the, the, the orange fuel tanks there have a problem when you attach the really big engine, which we're going to do. Like that's it. When it has a really big engine, they tend to overheat nearly instantly. This is bad. So if you add these little extrons on the bottom, it works quite nicely. And, well, more fuel. And we are, yes, going to stick some more struts on here. Just a little bit of paranoia and never hurt anyone. Alright. Finally, we're going to bolt on just a couple more engines. Now we're going to add the really, the really um, powerful kind. Now we've had uh, liquid engines, like these particularly powerful ones on the bottom. And you know, liquid engines. And what we're going to add. Thank you. What we're going to add now are these solid boosters. Uh, you know them, you love them. Launch space shuttles and don't afraid of anything. Apart from O rings, man. Um, they are. As soon as you turn them on, they stay on and will burn constantly and generate a reasonable amount of thrust. Which is good. We'd like them to do that. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to do, other than. Couple this up. I've known if this is going to work, of course. Um, that would take all the fun out of it. What we're going to do is add under structural this thing. The thingamajigger. Vitally important for holding a rocket off of the launch pad. And while we're here, pick up one of those. Which makes things a bit more aerodynamic. Done. Uh, last thing we want to do before we launch is to have a look at our staging down this side. Right. These are our liquid engines. Those all appear to be correct. What we want to do is have our big engines, those ones right here, to go off at the same time. We also want these bits to fall off as soon as we turn all of those off. You see. Right. We want all of our solid boosters to fall off at the same time. 
Let's see if they light up. Because if we don't, um, then we're just going to be carrying some useless engines. They all turned off at the same time, so they should all turn off at the same time. Done and done. The next things to fall off should be, yep, those bits. Then, as we scroll up, those engines turn on. You could have these bits fall off and turn the engines off at the same time. I just don't like doing that. Um, then we have those bits fall off. And then we turn that engine on. And then the entire rocket disintegrates. We're not going to worry about that for now. The only thing we need to do now is name it. Fireballs out. Awesome. So. Done. And we can man it. As you can see, I practice Kerbal Eugenics by only hiring, by only hiring the most stupid Kerbals. Uh, they will improve the Kerbal race one way or the other. Either they will survive and get to another planet, the good of a Kerbal kind, or they'll die and make Kerbal kind inherently smarter. And we can add action groups. Uh, we should have a slightly more technical macro y side of things. For instance, you could say if you activate a bot that you turn off all of these engines, jettison all of those, all of those, and basically shut down all the engines and decouple here. Decouple that. So basically, what's going to happen is if I press abort, the entire. All those engines are going to shut down. This entire section is going to fall off and leave us with this bit of rocket. There's no way this can possibly go wrong. So this means the only thing we have left to do is just launch. And we'll cover Raven Kevin. So I'm feeling generous to the poor guy. Okay, there's been a sudden burst of editing. One thing, it is now dawn. Uh, so we're previously about to launch at night, and I've slightly tweaked the capsule between these uh, since it was launched to get a slightly better view out of it. Um, well, let's give it a go. What's the worst that could happen? Stabilizer on and up. There we go. A maximum up. How do things look from Shelnard Kerman's position? Ah, oh, that's not terrifying at all. He's violently hammered backwards into space. Fly free, Shelnard. Shelnard is the stupidest and bravest of my curve, but not soon he's looking vaguely apprehensive at this. Are we looking? We are looking like a rocket. Hello, Shelnard. Oh, we're about to suffer solid fuel is about to burn out. Let's see how that looks from Shonan's position. If it looks at all. See, it's completely safe. I don't know what they're worried about. Ah, now we're making a fairly decent time on our ascent. I don't have any particular plans for this flight, um, and I've already shown the the how to launch your rocket, so uh, I suppose I get a bit higher and test the abort system. She was down there, is that Jeb? Yeah, that's Jeb. Having a bit of a problem with the single stage torpid aircraft, but uh, what are you going to do? Let's tilt this thing over. Now what I'm going to do now is give a quick test of the abort system that I mentioned. See how well this goes. It doesn't. Excellent. The abort system has malfunctioned. We'll do it the old-fashioned way. Everyone off. Okay, we've now aborted that. We've now aborted that stage, and now we're being propelled solely on nuclear fire. Which can only mean one thing. Shell lad. Oh no. Oh dear. Poor oh, Shell Well, um. It's an unfortunate turn up for the books. Well, folks, that's why you don't attend. To, uh, that's why you don't attempt to uh, surf a nuclear powered space capsule.
Ooh, he's not going to catch up with his own capsule. That's a tad unfortunate, because he might have been able to catch it on the way down. Oh well. <laughs>